Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Restorers. This is kind of a follow-up on the Dynaco Stereo 120. Um, just talk about it from the engineering and the upgrade perspective. This is the schematic and parts list that you print out. Um, Hi-Fi Engine has it. Electrotania has it. There's quite a few different places. I think Boat Anchor has it. And these are some of my notes here when I was working on it. Um, basically this is the power supply. So the one that I did is the third that I've done I'd say in maybe 12 years. The other two were done with prefab parts and they worked really well. They had a new life. Never heard a thing back. Did anything happen to them? This one was kept closer to the original design. There's a reason. I realized after working on these stereos for decades this was a really good design. Really smart economical but performing design. The only flaw in it was some of the components, especially the transistors, were operating right near their max. That's why a lot of times you blew transistors in these like over and over again. That's where the tip mod came. Now this one that I just did had the tip mod, so it had the, the tip 31 and the tip 32 for Q3 and Q4. So that would be like these two. These are the drivers, the outputs. That was already done. 68 picofarad cap and C13 was already done. The 1000 ohm resistor, this is all on the Dynaco pages, um, across the outputs wasn't done. And that puts a little bit of load so that the cap dissipates some of its energy rather than just sitting there so you can shut it off and if it has fresh caps it can hold the charge for a long time. And then if you turn it back on again fairly soon after turning it off again you get a pretty good wham. Now that's where uh, some th changes were made on this one. I put a volume control on the input, a 100k dual pot, stereo pot, and it had a push-pull switch on it. And that push-pull switch was uh, like, like this. So one position circuit was open, one position it was closed on the speakers. So you could turn this on with the control out and the speakers disconnected, which gives it like give it five seconds um, to charge up and then push it back in. You could do that, you know, you could do that. Or if you're listening to it and something goes wrong, you want to disconnect the speakers quickly, you can pull it out. Um, what I did then is I worked on the power supply and I did a tip mod on the power supply because those Texas instrument transistors are so easy to find so the first one which is a PNP it was a tip 42C this is like five times the current handling of what was originally there and then I used a tip 41 on the next stage and then this one here, it can remain as a 2N4347 or equivalent Q9. And I just looked for an equivalent transistor, an MJ802 or whatever it was. But basically a 15 amp TO3 transistor with 120 volts of power handling. So you're beefing up three weak points. Now there's a couple other things on these. There's actually this cap here, C10. Um, the C11, C12, all of these could be doubled in size. Um, the power supply here in C9, I believe it is, is pre-filtered off the bridge rectifier with a thousand microfarad. I bumped that up to a two thousand. And the right in here, if you double these, it actually has a delayed start effect. So it will actually come up to voltage just a little slower than normal which allows it to do a soft start effect so then you can have the speakers connected you turn this thing on there's just a very very gentle little boop if that so that's why I did there no um, rocket science replaced all those resistors with metal oxide ones and any that were half watt, bumped them up to a watt or two watts, depending on what I had. Because some of them were burned. 
very critical that the resistors around the Zener diode are gold, you know, like less than 5% uh, um, drift in value. So that helps with that. The final filter is 32200s and that replaces the 13300. Let's so just tell you what I did there. Now on this board here, and these boards did quite a bit. So just starting with these transistors, Q1 can be anything, the 2N3904 or anything like that, any small signal transistor will do. And then Q2, so here's where things change. You got to beef these up. Q2, I use a 2N3439, which is the same case style and lead style, but it's a, actually a 5 amp transistor versus a 3 amp transistor. And then here, one, one's a tip 40, one's a tip 31, one's a tip 32. Tip 31 is the NPN, tip 32 is the PNP. Here's a critical thing in biasing right here. Okay, I'm just going to show you on the, there's a picture of the boards. Okay, this C4 here is a non-polarized capacitor. That one is critical for biasing and it's a 35 microfarad and 25 volt DC cap. Okay, here's what you got to do with this one. This is just through trial and error, figure this out. So, those are both capacitors the same size. You see what kind of drawing burst I am? Okay, positive, negative, negative, positive. Put them side by side. Solder together the two negative leads. These are 100 microfarad apiece, 50 volt. And then put the positives into the board. So you're getting a bipolar cap, a non-polarized cap, of about 50 microfarads, which bumps that up a little bit. And then these resistors in here, R9, R3, R6, R7, change those to metal oxide gold standard because it's critical. Those control the bias in the circuit. There's, these are not adjustable, but I replaced most of the resistors on this board. I tested them as I went along, and if they drifted even a bit, I changed them. Um, another thing I did on this amp, let's go to another issue here. So here's the chassis, okay? Um, all that stiff wiring with the dried out insulation, I got rid of it all. I rewired the whole thing using, most of it was either 20 gauge or 18 gauge stranded wire, um, which is much more flexible. So I basically did everything the right length. Um, I did not restuff any caps. So here's the main cap. That's where the 32200s were. This this one here, okay, eliminated this one. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't sit there anymore. It was actually moved over and put in here. There's room for one more. This is the 1000. I bumped up to 2000 C9. Gives it a little more room in here. You need a lot of space for air in this thing. Here, this 1000 became a 2000. And what I did is I rewound these coils. So they're 36 inches of wire and 11 turns on the capacitors that were there. So basically, I wound them on an inch and a half, um, just like a dowel which came out to about 19 turns, which is roughly the same value. So eliminated this position here and put two 3300s as the um, output caps into the clamp here. And then I could have the volume control and the switch here for the speakers and just a little bit more room, make things a little nicer. Um, keep all the wiring tight. Um, this 0.47 ohm resistor is critical. So are the two 300 ohm ones on the ends of the boards. Like this was a good design, but it's an old design. Okay, I'm just going to check how much time we have left. Okay, about five seconds. Well, thanks for watching and listening, and uh, enjoy your Dynaco.